Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to a windy but sunny Sunday here in West Man. It's, uh, I don't know, some Sunday in late July 2020. We're all hiding under a rock. Does anybody really know what the number of the date is? Um, I don't know. I know if it's Monday through Friday because I got to go to work. Otherwise, you know, Sunday I got to do a video. The rest of it is really kind of irrelevant this year. Anyway, um, the major storm that we were being threatened with did hold itself off a little bit. And... It's a double bonus day today. We got actually kind of a little bit of a car show coming through town. So that's going to be interesting. They're coming from like an hour away and hitting all the rural communities. Kind of a, I don't know, I guess it's a morale booster, but still going to have to go out and hit that because we used to have tons of classic car shows back in the valley. And uh, yeah, Shocks and I do kind of miss drooling over those old beautiful machines. So we will be heading out to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But before we do that, I wanted to make sure I get this done. And there's some interesting stuff going on in the garden. So, yeah, no more babble. Let's get to her. Starting here at the Swale Garden, this thing gets far too much shade. But you know, at the same time, it's still doing a pretty good job of producing growth. I mean, almost everything that we can see growing here is an intentional. There are lots of different things in here. Like we've got a couple of different types of radishes. There's those rutabagas in here we can start to see more and more of the carrots coming up i think i just saw a frog hopping through i didn't plant the frog but you know i'll take him because i'm hoping they're eating mosquitoes and the various other things that are munching away this almost looks like a broccoli i don't remember planting any broccoli but um kind of looks like one okay surprise surprise we got our popcorn circle here this is still my favorite feature of the garden and an interesting note about the circle of corn planting when we had one of our major windstorms a few days back a couple of the larger stalks in the rows did end up laying down but these however stayed standing just as they are so that is very interesting and I think in my opinion definitely marks a positive point for planting corn in circles that's just that is fascinating and then yeah we've got more carrots and stuff over here and nice looking little bean plant except for the very top of it which doesn't look nice at all There's the carrots radishes got the cucumber I mean Johnny come lately but uh, whatever I'm still gonna let it grow the main issue here like being with this bed is root exudates and pumping liquid carbon into this future bed or into this bed to help with um, future productivity really that's part of why we've got so much diversity growing on in here and you know really it, it does seem to be working for at least above ground growth. Most of these are root crops. I'm just going to snip them off and uh, leave those roots in the ground to break down because that's going to release its carbon and such into the soil to feed the soil biology. And yeah, I know I talk a lot about this these days, um, but it really is a fascinating field of study. And I strongly encourage anybody who's interested in gardening because let's face it, it is the internet age. This is the information age. Go out there. Find Find that information and, you know, take those unfair advantages that we have as humans, use them to your advantage, right? That's, that's what it's all about. So anyway, that's the swale garden today, looking good. Recently ripped down the old tarp garage that we had out front and I'm kind of toying with the idea of using the framework for a basic structure, for like seed starting. Um, That'll be a whole different set of videos though, I'm sure, because I have issues with building a plastic film greenhouse in this weather. But let's look beside that at the potato garden. Yeah, yeah, I'd say Mr. Black Thumb's potatoes are definitely producing some green. We've got lots of growth here, lots of flowers coming up. Not necessarily in, you know, um, clusters of plants that are producing flowers, but you know, as we go around this thing, we got some more flowers here, we got some more flowers up here. Starting to lean forward and fall into the pumpkins, but that's okay because the pumpkins are kind of sprawling back into them as well. We got, so I had to take this one out and wrap it around the corn this way and, you know, we'll look up and kind of, oh, 
Noon, siren goes off at noon and 6 p.m. around here. But look at that sprawl on those pumpkins. That is amazing. This, the poor bean patch here is just not getting the light it used to could, that's for sure. And when I was out here checking the pumpkins earlier, I thought I noticed something interesting going on with my corn. Oh yeah, the beginning of tasseling and that looks like it's gonna be an awful lot of pollen available when that does open up. Got some more tasseling starting there. So I'm just gonna uh, assume and hope that it's happening on most of these larger plants and that with all this wind that we're getting, I will get some decent pollination. I'm not expecting a bumper crop here, but uh, what I would like to see is larger, fuller ears of corn than I got last year with uh, the harsh overplanting that I did. And hopefully, you know, we'll get some, we'll get some nice sweet corn. Got some last year, so I mean, with that terribly chaotic planting versus this, this is bound to do better. You got the spaghetti squash crawling out forward here. I still haven't rolled the log back to create kind of a bridge for it yet, but that is definitely coming up next week. And looky, looky, we have an open squash flower. And that is lovely. And if I look down in there, I can see lots more that are about to open. There's another one beside it that's getting close to that uh, about to open stage. Oh, there's another one up behind it that looks like it's about to open. So that is interesting. I'm starting to think uh, maybe staggering my squash plantings is the way to go because it seems to me in years past I've had issues with it seems like all the male flowers are open then all the female flowers are open and I'm having pollination issues really so I'm thinking if I plant you know maybe two weeks and two weeks and two weeks so say next year I do all of these in a single type of squash but each mound will be planted two weeks apart then maybe when you know those male flowers are opening these female flowers will be open and I'll get better production I'd love to hear thoughts on that you guys know how how much I value your feedback really what it comes down to is I wouldn't have anything growing if it wasn't for the awesome advice that uh, y'all give me in the comments well that and just stubborn donkey like persistence oh we got some tassels coming up in this one here I don't know if I can get it on the camera but that is exciting it's definitely some of the strongest corn plants I have grown. I mean, the stalks on these things. There's my thumb, there's the stalk. And that's good because we got these pumpkins trying to tie on and bring them down. And we got pumpkins coming out here, all along there. We got pumpkin coming up all the way along here and stretching up into the spaghetti squash in the front row of corn. So I am thinking that maybe using these mounds as a single species of squash or pumpkin or whatever will be the way to go. But yeah, I would still really love to hear some feedback. This bean patch in here, gonna be a little harder to tell when that's ripe than I had previously thought, or when that's ready to harvest, I should say. Because um, I honestly wasn't expecting the pumpkins to encroach that much. I thought, I thought I gave everything a lot of space this year. Apparently not. That brings us to the tomato and onion bed. You can see these onions, they're starting to fill out on top. Getting to be like those little baby onions that I was talking about. They are so tasty, so I am very excited about this. And it's such an interesting plant to watch grow. I've been thinking about moving some of these forward for a few years, so I'm really glad I got around to doing it this year. And uh, the fact that they're supposed to be a good companion plant for tomatoes really doesn't hurt the situation, does it? We got some flowers banging out all over the place on these tomato plants. Now in the past couple weeks we have experienced some plant flop for want of a better term because I don't have cages around these 40 some odd plants um, nor do I have them trellised up onto anything or you know like forward thinking gardeners do. I just didn't. Um, however because of the production that we're seeing out of this patch this year and you know thinking realistically about the numbers of tomatoes that we're actually going to consume what i'm thinking is maybe for next year i'm going to build a more permanent trellis system and i'll do it along the side frames 
but I'm going, going to leave this front open here. And then because of the whole companion planting thing and the successes that I seem to be seeing from that, I'm thinking maybe we'll do those uh, little onions. You can buy the baby onions in bulk. I want to call them pearl onions, but I think that's only when you eat them. Um, anyway, I want to buy a bunch of those in bulk and we can just do rows of onions up the middle of this and a frame of tomatoes trellised up so they can be um, tied up and just get lots of sun. And I think that might be the best way to maximize the yield in this garden patch. I'm still not 100%, but when am I ever, right? Like, <laughs> seriously, when am I ever 100% on a garden decision? Look at these broad ripples though. I mean, this is clearly a good location for tomato plants considering how abused they were and the fact that somewhere on this plant, I've got marbles. Yeah, there we go. Down on the bottom there. Little green marbles. There we go, stretch the plant. Hopefully the neighbors aren't looking over as I'm all bent over like that, but whatever. I love the sprawl on that plant. So that is definitely a species I, I would like to keep growing in the garden, not only for sentimental reasons, because I mean, Rob Bob and all that, but um, just because it's a really tasty and productive tomato in our short season environment. How do you, how do you argue with that, right? And these better boys here in the middle, I'm seeing lots of flowers in there. I'm certain that the wind is shaking it around to provide some basic pollination. I haven't seen as many bees this year as I'd like, but we got lots of uh, dragonflies f f mucking around and hitting the flowers. We got hummingbirds all over the place. We got butterflies all over the place. We do have lots of pollinators, but we're not seeing the bee populations that I'd really, I would prefer to have in the garden. So. That's it. To me, that's another reason why more serious gardeners should consider even uh, on a hobby level honeybee keeping. And I'm definitely going to be getting into that in the future years. A quick look at the chaos garden before we go today. You can just barely see the pine berries up there, but they do look like they're rooting into that hanging planter. So that is good. We'll be able to carry those forward. Lots of pollen available for those pollinators here. So that is great. I'm pretty sure uh, the neighbors consider these to be an invasive weed and I'm, I get frowned upon for that. But, um, you know, I'm in this for diversity. I'm in this for the long term and invasive plants are just, they're filling a hole. So most of the time they're fixing soil. Like this thistle's gotta go because I've been trying so hard to get rid of the thistles before they go to seed. And this is just getting to flower. So I've got another couple of days, but sure is a pretty flowers, which is how we ended up with so much of it around here in the first place. But here in the chaos garden, look at the size of those dandelion leaves. And let's not forget that healthy dandelion leaves are an edible, right? I, I feed them to the chickens, but I have eaten dandelion greens in salads and they are pretty good for you. So if I was trying to grow crops in here for human consumption, I probably would have picked those a couple of weeks ago before they started to brown. But yeah, beautiful salad production. You know, grasses are actually fairly high in proteins. Don't believe me, eat some beef. You know, there's a lot going on here. And like I say, it's, it's really, it's all about the diversity with the chaos garden. And looking at this, you know, untouched piece of land, it's got a couple of logs in it, but I haven't done anything with it this year, right? Look at the growth on this thing. Some of those yellow flowers are taller than I am, and I'm almost six feet, so that's not bad from a uh, biomass production point of view, we'll say. Anywho, I want to get this uh, into the computer and start editing it before the cars get to town. So that means that's where I'm going to boogaloo and bounce out of here today. But I hope you've enjoyed the look around the garden to see what's growing. And uh, if you've got any feedback for me about that um, delayed planting of pumpkins or squash taking up all three of the mounds in what's currently the corn patch, I would love to hear it in the comments below. So yeah, much love everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic week um, behind you and a fantastic week ahead. And I hope everything's growing just awesome in your gardens. I am out of here. Take care. Much love everybody.